Welcome back. In this video, I am going to show you how to use functions in Python. Uh, what is a function? A function is a reusable code block, a way of creating code once and make it uh, reusable in different parts of our project. It helps us to respect the um, dry principles, so don't repeat yourself. And if you create um, a bit of code and you find yourself copying and pasting it over and over just changing a um, few bits that you um, use for this code it's a good use case for a function in this tutorial I am not going to show you how to create a function that writes a Fibonacci series or other mathematical oriented functions instead I will teach you how to write uh, functions and how to use them and then it's up to you um, to define your use cases and uh, based on what you need to go to accomplish uh, let's get started from the beginning and let's see how to write a function in Python. So, define a function. So, function definition starts with the keyword def and follows the name of the function and a pair of parentheses. Um, where inside the parentheses you can um, specify none or a uh, a multiple um, arguments <clears throat> and then um, the line the first line closes uh, with a semicolon uh, the body of the function starts from the following line and it's indented to the right as I said inside the parentheses of the function you can of the function definition you can use arguments uh, that our function will then um, use inside its body. Arguments like variable names that we define only within the scope of our function and they are not available outside. Functions can define variable inside their body other than arguments and these also are uh, only defined within the scope of the function so only available inside the function body. So let's first start by um, imagining um, the use case. So let's write some code. And let's, for instance, let's say name one is equal to an input. And then we say, what's your name? Very basic example, but it will give you a good idea of what you can do. So, Greek Kings 1, and then we say uh, let's output a message, and then we say hello, and then we say name 1. So, this is similar to uh, df in front of the um, string uh, it's similar to calling the format method instead of passing the variable name inside the format method as a parameter I am uh, simply um, appending an f in front of the string and then I use the name of the function inside of the variable inside the curly brackets and that will be translated into uh, the same that would be written as a variable. So let's print the reading one and let's see the output of this code. So the terminal asks my name, so I will type not here, but inside the terminal. Then I will type my name and then he greeted me. So I say hello Fabio. Uh, right, let's imagine that we have more users to read and what we you would do? Uh, well, you could do that. Copy and paste. Let's say that we have two more users to greet. So we say name two, and let's say greet two, and then we change this variable here, and then we change this variable inside here. 
and then again we say name tree and then we copy that inside the curly brackets so we are with the right message and then we say name tree here okay and then we updated this as well so we have six lines of code and they are pretty much the same um, so we call the input function and then we format the string to output the message hello and the name of the user and then we say hello user we create the user so let's run this code and let's see what happened so we got the first input field that he and he are is asking my name so I say Fabio and then I say hello Fabio and then again what's your name let's say Serena and then hello Serena again let's again it asks me for another name so that's the third and final input nope and let's say that we say Carlo and hello Carlo okay we wrote the same code over and over just to output the simple message so if you have 10 or 20 users that's not really the best approach of writing your code so um, we here as you see we defined each time an input function and then a greeting message and then we printed it we could have printed it directly using and um, wrapping the greeting um inside the print function but still we copy two lines of code and what if we want to use the greeting message somewhere else uh, as you see that's not really the best thing to do i mean as i said we could do that save one line of code but the same problem remains that if you want to use this code again you would have to copy it again from uh, from here or write that these two lines or three lines again so let's see how we could convert this into a function and how they work so we said that the first thing that we want to do is use the def keyword to define our function so for our function definition we start the line with the def and then we use a name we define a name for our function then a pair of parentheses inside here we could specify arguments but not in this case and then we put the semicolon to close the line when we um, type enter uh, inside the id um, that will immediately uh, indent the next line to the right so you can start writing your function so um, let's see uh, let's define the name and use it for the input so we define the name variable we call the input function and then in here we write this so we could grab this that and we copy that then in the next line we want the message we can um, write that straight from here let's do that so we add the f and then we add this message here hello and then the name that we stored inside the variable and then that's it so now let's first um, comment this code out let's wrap it in here okay now when we call this function we will get the same thing that we had from here when we want to call it again we do the same and over and over without even having to write again this input or this print message because the function prints um, this message for us so let's use it uh, let's say um, name one again let's define variables uh, but we say greeting and the name two 
and then we say greeting name tree and then again we call the function greeting so that's equal to these lines of code but the code is much more uh, organized and readable because we see that we are calling every time this greeting fine function so we see that the greeting function what it does it's created name variable where I store the result of the input that the user types and then prints a message for us let's run this code and see what we got so we should get again we're going an error uninspected indent let's check let's save the code run again okay what's your name and then here and then again hello fabio and again what's your name Serena, Carla. and as you see we have the same result that we had before but we wrapped everything inside the function so we didn't have to call this input function three times and we didn't have to call these print functions three times well the only thing we, we that we have to do is to invoke the function so we call the function and then we print these messages straight away so um let's talk um about the function scope so in this example where we printed here where we printed this name variable we um, use the name variable that we defined inside our um, function the name variable is only accessible from uh, in the inside of the func function so from the scope of the function uh, what I mean is let's see that Okay, so if we try now <clears throat> to print name variable um, from the outside of the function body, we will get an error because the variable is not defined inside the global scope. So we have a local scope, so that's the local scope of the function, and then we have global scope, which is this one outside. Let's try to define, let's first try to print the variables. So the ID immediately tells me that this is not a valid variable. In fact, if I run the code, let's comment out this queue so we don't have to type twice. So let's say Fabio. And then you see, we got name error, name name is not defined because we did not define this variable name anywhere except inside this function. If we um, up here or up here is the same. If we define a name variable here and then we set that to Serena, for instance, you will see that we print the name variable here and then we print also the name, the greeting, but these two names are not the same. So let's run it. let's run it and say Fabio so the first name that the type which is the one that we stored inside the greeting function is Fabio and let's run it and we got hello Fabio but then we printed the name variable here uh, we got Serena because these are actually two different variables they have nothing in common so um, because the first one this one is in the global scope and that's that one is in this in the function scope is in local scope of the function but of course if we um, try to print the name variable inside the function block we will see that we got the right value in this case let's print first the name Okay, and then we print the message and then we print again the function in the global scope. Let's run the code. Uh, what's wrong? Name here. Name and then we print 
the name no that's correct you need to run correctly yeah so fabio is the first name and as you see we first saved the name data type inside the name variable then we print it inside the function and then after it we print the message so we got the name data type and then the message that i've got from this running this function but then we got the name which was in the global scope and which is arena in this case so as you see it's different from the one that i typed so we said that we can use a variable that we have defined inside the function uh, only inside the function because it's defined in the local scope of the function but we also have external uh, variable those that we define inside the function that are in the global scope and then that we can uh, not change their content from inside the function uh, definition so we could uh, do that uh, using the global keyword uh, let's see it in action. Let me define a function, a, an empty list, and assign it to a variable. And then let me uh, define a function. Uh, so we define the function ask name, and we return the result of this input function. And then again, another function. Let me grab it from the notes and so you don't have to watch me typing it the entire function okay uh, i'm going to explain what it does in a second um, let's see okay uh, and here we define this add name function and then we set a variable uh, to the boolean value true uh, and then we use the loop uh, while loop uh, to execute this bit of code uh, as long as the play by value is true. So we, here we define a name variable and then we call the ask name function um, to ask the user uh, a name. And then we uh, use the global keyword and uh, with the name of the variable that we want to refer inside this uh, function uh, body. Uh, so we say that we want to grab the name list variable, which is the one in the global scope. And then now we call it, we reference this function, and we use the append method since it is a list uh, to append to the list the name that the user passed to us using the ask name variable and then we ask to the user if he wants to keep going so to keep adding num names to its list and we say you have to type yes or no we give it an int and then we use the an if else clause to say if they add more so if this variable which contains the user um, answer it's yes we keep going so the play value uh, is set again to true otherwise the play value is going to be false and we quit so uh, basically the loop ends and then we print the content of the name names list and in here we call this add name function and then again we print the content of the names list so to see that we have successfully appended these elements to this function uh, to this list using this function so let's run the code and see what happens add a name Fabio and you want to continue yes add a name Serena I want to keep going add the name Carlo and yes, let's keep going. Let's end again, Fabio. I don't know, I want to stop. And as you see, we got these two lists which are identical. The first one has exactly the names that are passed to it, and even the second has the same names. So we have used this global keyword to modify the content of this list, which was defined inside the global scope. So let's see how to use the return keyword. Um, 
instead of uh, printing the message inside the function as we did so far, uh, we can use the return keyword. So this keyword lets us uh, store the result of the function uh, for later use. And uh, let's see the same function, but using the return keyword. So let's grab the, the greeting function again. Uh, the first one. So let's get rid of that. So let's grab again this function and replace this one with the return keyword. And let's call it. So one um, reading. Uh, nope. So we call this function three times and we store each time the result inside the variable as if we run it, we ask of this name, so Fabio and then Serena and then Carlo. And as you see, this time I was asked to type the name for three times, but I didn't see any message. So I didn't get as a result of the of calling this function anything but the input function itself which asked me to type my name uh, but we store the result the result of this greeting function inside the one two and three variables so if we now use this print method uh, function and we say one two and three and then we run the code again Let's run the code, okay. So now what, what we're gonna do is type again Fabio, Serena, Carlo, and then I say we got, as we see, we have got this message, hello Fabio, hello Serena, and hello Carlo, on one line because we print the three fun functions inside the same print statement, um, print function. So, these actually um, take the place of these. So we store, we call the greeting method uh, function and we then store its result. So in this case, what's after the return keyword inside this variable and then we print that. Otherwise we could wrap that inside the print function if we don't want to use that later and then we will see the method so for the third line yeah. so for the third time we got for the third name we will get a different message so a civil message from the previous two so we got look arlo on a several line because we dropped that greeting function inside the print function we, that allow us to see immediately the result. So in this example here, we have stored the resulting message. So we won't see it in the terminal when we type our name in the input field by assigning the result to a function uh, of the function to a variable. However, we will be able to access its message whenever we print that variable. Well, let's see another uh, example. Uh, inside the function, we can use the also modules. So we're gonna we can import a specific module module uh, if we know that it will be used only here. So all inside this function. Uh, and in the next example, uh, we'll show you how to create a function that calculates the factorial uh, of a sequence of number. Basically, it multiplies all the number. Uh, in the sequence and then return its result. So let's, this is going to be the, the only mathematical function that I'm going to show you. So, example external module. And we 
say um, import function. First, the function. And then we type and we pass to the function an argument, which is a number. Um, then we say import math. And then we return. Here, mat but and then for this number so we used here an argument for this function so we need to pass something inside the function uh, when we call it so let's see print call real and then in here we need to specify a number if you type a number here, uh, like let's say 10, let's say 5, it would be less long. Let's print it and see what we go. Again, the names Fabio, Carlo, Serena, and hello Fabio, hello Carla, and then we got 120, which is the result of calling this function, and it's the factorial function that we used from the math module. So we first imported this module inside the function and then we used it to print the factorial. Uh, of course, if we try to use the math here, it won't work because it's not imported in the global scope, but it's only, outs it's, uh, it's only available inside the function. So inside the function definition, we import the math module, then we use the factorial function, um, the factorial method uh, of this module to run the calculation, and then we return it. The module is only available inside the function. Also using it this way, we have a function that contains all it needs to run correctly. However, if you have other functions that requires a specific module to work, it's better to import the module um, that you need only once and do it at the top of the file. So in this case, it will be like something like that. And then when I save Visual Studio Code, uh, immediately move this on top of the file. So. Um, let's see, since here we uh, mentioned arguments, let's see them and how to use them. Okay, so functions can accept arguments between parentheses. Arguments lie, are like variables only available to the function and that we need to use when calling the function. So an argument can be a positional or a keyword argument. Positional arguments need to be defined before the keyword argument. So let's see what I mean. So let's create a function. And inside the parentheses, I am going to define a set of um, arguments. So user name and then email, and then the system. And this is going to be a keyword argument. So let's pass to it a variable, um, a value, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. And then another one, and we see status equal to false. So as you see, um, these are exactly like variable. We can assign them a value, and in this case, it will be a keyword argument, which has a default value assigned to it. And this must be defined, these two must be defined first, and then we can define these two. And if we use the keyword when we call the function and we um, add a value, a different value if we want, we don't have to follow in you know, the specific order so system before it starts after but we can also mix them it doesn't matter so let's close the line with the semicolon and then user that and it's equal to a dictionary 
description, like I said. And then let's say user name and columns username. So as you see here, I am I don't have any value for the username, and I use it as a variable, which is which keep which keeps the um, the place. And then when we call the function, you will see that these will be replaced by value that we pass to the function when we call it, uh, like we did here. And so it will be used inside our dictionary. So let's say comma and then email, capital E, and say email. And then for the uh, system, we have a default value, so for each iteration, it will be Ubuntu. So system, and then again, a new another one, status, and log in status, and say false, uh, no, sorry, say status. Okay, uh, so now, what we want to do is to return the user status dictionary. And then what we need to do now is just to call it. Since we use the return uh, keyword, we need to drop that inside the function, uh, print function, if we want to see the result. So let's say, uh, what was his name? Call user status. And then we first, as you see the ID, tells us that we need the first parameter, which is mandatory, and username, so we'll say Fabio, and then again an email, um, Fabio. And then uh, we can, if we want, pass a different system and a different status, otherwise the function will work if we call it in this way. Let's see it in action. Did we call the input? Yeah. Um, let's comment this out so we don't have to type anything. Okay, let's run the code, and you see we got this dictionary here, and there's the username that I passed, and then the email that we assigned as a second argument, and then it catching the system and logged in status values from the default values of the function definition. But if we want, we can override that, and let's say we want to do um Linux uh, Windows and then in here we can say uh, which is true which is logged in okay and then when we print that you will see a different result and you will see the system is Windows and the status is logged in is true so we can use um, this syntax to define the system and the status arguments. So we need to respect the order. Otherwise, we could say uh, system equal to Windows and status equal to true. And that's going to give us the same result. And we can even mix them. So we can say status and system and since we used keyword we will see same result you no know, matter where you place it but we cannot do that we cannot call this first that will be you see everything is alighted in red because the position arguments um, must be before the key arguments keywords argument so let's wrap up. So inside this function, we defined a variable, um, which is the user stats variable. 
and we passed to it a dictionary which contains our arguments um, like we do with fun with variables and then we return it we return, we return the entire dictionary so we can assign the result of the function to a variable so we can then iterate through over uh, over the dictionary using a for loop or use a for loop uh, directly inside this uh, function declaration so in, inside the function declaration we can use all sorts of data types and control flow tools uh, that we studied so far so let's uh, use a for loop inside the definition to iterate over the dictionary and output a different message instead so let's see functions with loops. Um, let's see the let's wrap let's grab the same function that we got here. Okay, so if I want to use a loop, I could do that, something like that and say collect user set. And let me grab what we passed here and let me copy that. Okay, we now stored this dictionary inside the stats variable. And we could use the for loop, so for key value in um, that items, and then in here we could say uh, print um, let's print this to one in front of the other format key and value okay now if we run this code you will see the first first we got this entire dictionary which was when we called this function before now we got uh one by line one per line which is uh this result that we got here so the result of calling this loop on each of the keys and the keys and the values but um, so in the previous episode, in, pre in the previous example, we uh, used the return keyword inside the function uh, to return the dictionary, and then outside it, so in here, we used the for loop um, to loop over its element. But we can do the same thing inside the loop. So let's grab everything that we got here. And let's also grab this loop. So insta instead of returning the result, we use the for loop and let's loop over this variable. So the dictionary is inside this variable and we use the items method on the dictionary and then we store each the key and the values inside this variables and then we print this message. I'm using the print uh, function now inside this uh, function because otherwise if I use the return keyword the execution of the code will be stopped at the first iteration. So let's run this function. And let's pass to it some of these. Let's say these two. And let's see what we got now. Okay, so from this point here, we got the same result that we got before. Before it was Windows and Ubuntu, but since um, Windows and True, but since I did not pass the other two um, keyword arguments uh, to this function call, I will get the default values, which are these two, Ubuntu and false. And as you see, it's all in um, their respective line so we use the loop inside the function so whenever we call it we will get the result of this function call
on a separate line. So let's say we go with Serena and then Serena here. You will see that when I call it, I got this first set of results for Serena and this one for me. Uh, so in this example, we use the for loop uh, and we use it inside the function with the print uh, function um, to display all the results of this um, dictionary. Otherwise, using the return keyword will have stopped the result at the first iteration. I'll show you. So if in here I type um, return keyword, I use the return keyword instead of the print function, uh, we get only the first two elements. Yeah, I need to use the print function here to see a result. So wrapping these two functions call inside the print function, print function okay and then running it i will see only the first element of the dictionary for each of the function calls so only the username because when we use the return keyword the execution of the code stops so and it's and this expression is returned immediately so we run this loop only the first time so at the first element we return the keyword and the value and then we stop this execution of the code so um, uh, let's see as you as you see here you know in the previous example so let's bring it back as it was so in here as you see we use the print function which is another function inside this function uh, so we use a function inside the other so that's a sign that we can call a function from another function so as we mentioned earlier we can call a function from inside another function like we do when we use the print function uh, to get the message uh, so let's define two functions and then we will call the first one inside the second uh, so I uh, will define a ask name function and then a parenthesis and semicolon and then I will return immediately the result of the input function. Like that. And then another function. Um, let's see. Um, calculate age so we define a function that will help us to calculate the age of a user so let's say um, the first thing that we want to do is to call the name uh, ask name function and then store it inside a variable so we define a name variable and then in here we use the ask name function and the result of this uh, function call will be stored inside the name variable. Then what else? We need to calculate the age. So let's grab, let's ask to the user its year of birth and then store it inside the variable uh, YOB. Uh, so input and then say Uh, let's make it more personal. So we have already access to the name of the user because he typed before when we call the ask name function and then the result is inside the name variable. So we can use placeholder and directly like the we write less code. And then um, that's it. So the result of that uh, we will use it to calculate the age of the user. Let's first grab the current year first. We need to know 
what's the current year before we are able to calculate the user age based on its year of birth. So let's say current age and then we need the module. I'm going to import the module daytime inside the function. And then call it. So daytime, daytime um, now, daytime now, and then I want to grab the year like that. And let's see, um, now we can create an age variable and then we do um, current. Uh, Current year, no age. Current year. And then minus year of birth. But as you know, this input function returns always a string, so we need to convert that to an integer so we can make this operation. And that's pretty much it. Uh, let's return a message. So the name first, so Fabio is age. Use the format and say name and then age as parameters. And then let's call this function and see what we get. So we used here, we define the first function, and then we create another function, and then inside this function we called this the first function, so ask name function. And as you see, when we uh, since we are using the return keyword. At this point, we need to print the message that we will get out of this function call. So, calc age. We do not need to pass any argument for this function because it will ask us some inputs. And let's print it. So, what's your name? Say Fabio. What's your age? Let's say I was born in 2000. And there is an error date team uh, because that's date time misspelled the module um, name here. So let's run this again. What's your name, Fabio? And the birth say 2000. If I was it was born in 2000, I had 20 years now, uh, but I'm much older than that. So twice the age, and let's say that's for function. That's pretty much it. Uh, everything that I want to show you. There is uh, a lot more you can learn about function. So I suggest you head over the documentation to learn more. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll see you in the next video. So next week for a new video about P Python and exactly we will cover the object-oriented programming um, principles uh, in Python. I'll see you there. Cheers.